You've asked for a flip through of the rest of the grungy junk journals made by Kerstin at House of Chaos Art on Instagram that you've seen a while ago on my channel here on my desk. So guess what we are doing today? <laughs> I am giving you a flip through of these beautiful journals made by Kerstin and at the same time while I'm doing that I would like to answer some more of your questions that you have asked me below my previous videos. <laughs> Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art and welcome to another episode of my little making of series here on my YouTube channel. For this series, I have taken your questions and suggestions to show you a little look behind the scenes of Luisa Heinzel, meaning showing you how it is to have an Etsy shop, a YouTube channel and all this social media things around that. And you have asked some really interesting questions that I would like to answer, of course. Um, and at the same time, within this series, we are creating a digital printable paper collection together. So if you have missed the previous videos, then please check out the info box. I have a playlist link there for you where you can find all of the videos that I've published before this video so that you can catch up what you perhaps have missed. If you perhaps are wondering which digital items we've already created for you to download and print at home, then please check out the info box. There are all the links um, of the items that we have already created. There are some background pages, really, really grungy, made out of Kerstin's material and some of my own ideas. And there's a mix and match grungy flowers ephemera pack that you also can find in my Etsy shop that I've created in collaboration with Kerstin. So if you want to check that out, then please click the links down below in the description box. And of course, I was a little bit busy <laughs> while um, you have seen some other videos on my channel. And I have created the junk journal pages of our grungy fairy kit. So this printable is very grungy and it has some fairies in it. So in the end of this video, I will show you my junk journal pages with the fairies that I have created with Kerstin's work and my own drawings in Procreate. And um, yeah, that was a very, very big adventure for me. I'm really, really proud um, that I could finally manage it to bring out those pages. I'm totally in love with those pages, by the way. <laughs> so if you want to check them out, then please wait um, until the end of this video. So we are going to start with this cute journal here. Look at this cover. I'm I'm totally in love with this cover. I wish uh, there would be a pillowcase like this so that I could <laughs> take this to my bed and put my head on top of this gorgeous thing here while I'm sleeping. I guess that that would bring so much inspiration and so many great ideas during the night but of course that's not possible. Kerstin has sewn around here relatively wild. I really really love this pattern. This is so great and this feels so smooth so this is a soft cover obviously. This is not only so cute because it has this small size but it's so oh, so wonderful to touch. I always wish you could touch this materials that we are showing in the videos. This is, ah, I'm so sad that you can't touch this. Please believe me, it's just gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. So let's start with the first question. And I think I have to bring my camera down a little bit so that you can uh, see this better. So the first question that I would like to answer is, um, what is your favorite thing about journaling? This question is so great. It's just fantastic. I think my favorite thing about journaling is exactly this, what I'm experiencing here at the moment. Coming in contact with other people, um, yeah, getting new friends through junk journaling is for me the most amazing thing that could happen and um, the most amazing thing that a hobby or for me it's a passion, junk journaling for me is a passion, could bring to to me or to any other uh, person who is making junk journals, of course. 
Um, and here in this journal, and that's the reason why I have chosen this journal for the first flip through, um, here it says respect. It says something else, but this word, um, it's similar in English. It means respect. So to have respect uh, for the work of other people, that's a very, very big point for me um, in combination with junk journaling. We see so many different creations every day. We see so many different styles. I mean, if you look at this, you will realize that Kerstin's style is totally different than mine. And we can learn so much from each other, even if we have not the same style. And perhaps I see something that is totally not my style. And perhaps I see something that I don't like. I mean, I love Kerstin's work. This is not a good example for what I am trying to say. <laughs> But it can happen, of course, that you see something, for example, on Instagram that you totally don't like. But having respect um, to this creation is something for me that's essential for junk journaling and for being a junk journaler um junk journaling is so special because the people are so special i guess there is no one um in this world who is making junk journals or who can make junk journals who is a root person this community is so so wonderful and that's what i love about junk journaling the most it's not that I don't like making the journal itself, of course not. I mean, being in this process and being creative, of course, is a very, very massive part of my life and of yours probably as well if you are making junk journals. But everything around, um, coming in contact with the people, um, for me, it's more worth than everything else. And another point is written here. Believe in yourself. Junk journaling can make this happen. If you have problems in your normal life, I mean, if you are making junk journals, you don't have a normal life <laughs> because you are collecting strange things and you are, yeah, a little bit weird, I would say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know what I mean. If you make junk journals, then you know this feeling And there's strange, um, uh, yeah, reactions to what you are doing from the other people who are not making junk journals. And ah, this is so cool. Now, <laughs> I guess I have lost my words now. Um, junk journaling can, ah, it's so hard for me also to explain that in English. Um, junk journaling can, can bring so, so much um, to your soul and to your mental health, that is really incredible. I mean, junk journaling can make you believe in yourself. And that's a very, very special thing. And that also has to do with this community. Happiness can be brought to your life by junk journaling. And that's the special thing for me. And of course, that has to do with this great community and with all of those people out there who are so, so wonderful and so, yeah, <laughs> just heartwarming. Um, you are helping each other. You are helping out with materials, with information, with tutorials and that stuff. I mean, all of the junk journalers who are on YouTube um, are sharing tutorials for free. And that's not so normal. I mean, if you want to learn something um, in the normal world, you have mostly to pay for something, to pay for a class or something like that. And there are so many YouTuber who give their knowledge and their ideas for free to you. And that's just great. And that is such a wonderful feeling to do this. I mean, I'm doing that as well. When I'm showing you my tutorials, I... Uh, don't want any money. You can watch that for free. Um, and that's so great because you are giving me back so much. And that's the most wonderful thing in this world. Then um, there was another question that says, 
What is your favorite style of journal? Like chunky, small and purse-sized or extra big and skinny? That is a very good question as well. By the way, it was the same person who has asked that question um, as the other one before. Ooh, <laughs> that, is, that is a very special effect. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't this just great that we can laugh about? So such small things like this little thingy here that is doing this little dance in the air. <laughs> so um, to answer this question, um, my favorite style of junk journals um, is a style that, hmm, I would say, I love grunge very, very much. I absolutely love what Kerstin did here. Um, and I love this mixture of grunge, a little bit vintage and art journaling. So what she, for example, has done here, for me, it's not only junk journaling, it's some kind of art journaling as well not only here, also in other areas of this journal, of course, but mm, this mixture of putting some pieces down to create a little artwork on the page and having a journal at the same time. That's my favorite style of, of, of junk journaling. And if you know my channel, <clears throat> you know that I'm trying to do that in my own journals as well. That's also the reason why my channel is called junk journal art. So I'm trying to combine junk journaling and art journaling. And talking about things that you can journal about is for me relatively hard because, I mean, so many people asked um, for uh, what can I journal about? And that is hard for me to answer because for the most people who are asking that, and attention, who are looking for reasons for journaling. That was a good one. <laughs> um, those people often um, want to write something in their journals. And journaling is so different for the different people. Um, for me, junk journaling is always art journaling as well. Even if I don't like those different definitions, I don't like to, to make so many differences between junk journaling and art journaling. But um, for me, for example, this little piece here, this little collage can be as much journaling as if this would be white and I would write something on top. And there are no rules for junk journaling. There are no rules for art journaling or for glue books or for bullet journals or something like that. Oh, I, I guess bullet journals have the most <laughs> rules. But do you know what I mean? You can do what you want. And that's the great thing because there are no um, mistakes that you can make. Junk journaling and art journaling doesn't know any mistakes. You can put in your journals what you want, what you find, what you want to recycle or upcycle. Um, your own memories, everything that's going on in your mind can be put into a junk journal. And for me, um, combining that with some art journaling is the most relaxing thing that I can imagine. And because of that, um, I really like those artsy journals. That's my favorite style of junk journal. No matter what theme, if it's steampunk or really vintage with original ephemera or with printables, that doesn't matter. Um, if it has this artsy style, then it's really, really interesting for me. And it's like um, I can be a little sponge going over the journal and soaking some ideas and perhaps also stealing some ideas for myself and for my own journals. And um, a size of a journal really doesn't matter, I would say. Then there was a question, what is your favorite color palette and your least favorite? 
Mm, and another question that uh, fits really well to this one is what are your three favorite color combinations? Um, in the past videos, we also have talked about finding your style. I think that's going along with this question about the colors. I mean, colors can help to find your style. And colors are, for me, relatively important to recognize a style. So um, I don't know, and I have told you that in one of my other videos, I really don't know if I already have found my own style. I can tell you something about what I like and what I don't like, and that also has to do with the colors that I like and that I don't like. Um, but it's really, really hard for me because um, my absolutely favorite color, if I see it separately or even in a project, <laughs> is forest moss. Um, this Distress Oxide ink here, it is some kind of a, yeah, foresty... <laughs> Uh, I don't know the adjective of moss, but you know what I mean. It's it's such a great, great green. It's sometimes like olive green, depending on which paper you use it. Sometimes it has some yellowish um, colors in it, and I really, really love this color. Um, and I especially love this in combination with everything that's brown. Um, and a little bit vintage, I would say. So, um, for example, if I have this page here and I put um, some of this forest moss here, um, then it's the perfect page for me. <laughs> that doesn't mean that this page is not perfect, but that's clear, isn't it? Um, I also really, really like a color like this here. This is uh, probably um, shown in the camera a little bit very very yellowish in reality it's not so yellow as you can see it in the camera um, the combination with forest moss and this is very very interesting um, and I guess that I have found out that I like to have a relatively neutral background and much brown no matter if it's, I mean, I'm using uh, Distress Oxide inks very often, so I'm talking in those uh, names of the colors. No matter of it, if it is um, Vintage Photo or Walnut Stain or Ground Espresso, all of these browns are really, really beautiful in my eyes. And I really like to combine those browns with a pop of color. But I also enjoy, and that's why I love Kerstin's work so much, I also um, love to include um, some black and white. I uh, don't know why on this page just, there's no black and white <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Would be great to see some of those examples so that I can show you what I mean. So this, for example, this for me is just perfect. Um, if this would be my background, I would have found my favorite colors for the background and then perhaps a pop of um, forest moss or even some other colors. What I also really, really like in the meantime is Villainous Portion. This is one of my absolutely favorite Distress Oxide inks. And I've also, and I think that some of you um, wouldn't believe that, <laughs> I've also bought Dusty Concord. This is purple as well. Saltwater Taffy. You know I am not a fan of pink, yeah, but <laughs> and I also have Victorian Velvet in the meantime. And I have to say, so here are the swatches that I've made, and I have to say um, I found peace with pink and all of those purple colors, especially pink. Um, that is something for me that I nearly can't believe, but it is a fact. So that means if I see something like this, um, in the past I would have said, ooh, pink, I don't like pink. But now 
I don't know why that happened. I can look at this and I can say, this is a beautiful page and I have no problem with the color anymore. <laughs> Another question was, what is your favorite theme for a junk journal? Steampunk, spring, autumn, shabby chic, winter, Christmas, boho, etc. Um, that's easy to answer because um, I think um, I've made a very big step in my junk journal making. Um, I found that out a while ago um, that I come into a little stress, I would say, when I think about a theme for a journal. I mean, does this journal has a theme? I think um, you could define a theme for this journal. You could say it is a grungy diary, for example, or It is a floral journal. It is an art journal as well. Is that a theme? Or do we need this? Um, we are making a bird journal, for example. Let's stay with this example. If you want to make a bird journal, then, of course, you will collect some bird pictures. You will probably fuzzy cut out some birds, make a collage, place the bird on top, and you have a bird page. And if you do that on every page, you have a bird journal. That's obvious, isn't it? Are you allowed to put, for example, such a picture into a bird journal? I guess there are some people who would say, no, I don't want to have this um, face of this woman in my bird journal. I have no problem with that. If here would be birds, I would have absolutely no problem. In the meantime, I... Um, I mean, I have made many themed journals in the past. My journals in the past, I guess, always had a theme. And I was searching for hours, for days, sometimes for weeks, for the matching materials for the different themes. And um, I was searching for papers that had this theme. And then I thought, Louise, why the heck are you making such a stress to yourself? Because... Um, it, it stressed me, it, it stopped me in my creativity to find um, the exactly right uh, book pages, for example. Um, and then I thought I can also um, make a journal that has no theme, but you can see that it is not... Um, A paper that you have taken from here and there and thrown into the journal and then you have the journal. I mean, what I'm doing has thoughts behind it. When I make a journal, it probably has no theme, but it has thoughts behind it and the colors would match as well as in Kerstin's journals here. Um, if I want to put a butterfly here, for example, then I can um, live with putting a flamingo in the same color here. I have no problem with that because I don't like to say this is a butterfly journal and I can't put the flamingo here even if it would fit perfectly here with the color. I mean, a flam flamingo has the same color as this butterfly. Um, I have no problem with that. And when you um, find out what gives you more relaxed time of journaling then you don't need a theme i mean that's only my opinion so um that's the reason why i uh have no favorite theme for a journal or um yeah i like every journal if the journal is beautiful and if, if you can see that someone has thought about what he has done in the journal then it's the perfect journal um, I like those journals with those details, no matter which theme it is, where you can see, oh, the, the person has made some thoughts why this or that is here. If you can see um, color bridges, for example, um, you can see things that um, are cohesive within the whole journal and that go like, um, yeah, a, a theme with color, with texture, or with with whatever through the journal, um, that is what I like. And that is what makes the theme of a journal for me. <laughs> the next question is a little bit funny because it says, 
have you always been a perfectionist? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But, um, oh my goodness, how can I explain that in English? So let's, let's for example, um, stay at this page. Being a perfectionist means um, you have perhaps a problem with things like this. Yeah, look at this. This is um, torn from a paper pad, obviously, and these little things here are open, as you can see. And if you would write in this journal and you would work in this journal and flip the pages over and over again, then this would perhaps become a little bit destroyed. This is relatively fragile, even if it's a r really hard paper, but it's it's really heavy. But um, this could be destroyed when you work in the journal. And for a perfectionist, it would be perhaps a problem if one of these things are missing. If this would fall off, then this row would not be complete anymore. Um, but... In the meantime, I have, and that's only one example of thousands of examples uh, that I could give to you. Um, but in the meantime, I have learned that that is not so important, that it can also be beautiful if one of these things is missing. If this would be my own journal, I would tear one off now to show you that I'm I can live with that and that I uh, can laugh about my perfectionism. But this is not my own journal. I can't tear this off. <laughs> so that has to do with respect to the journal, of course, what I have told you in the very beginning of this video. I can't I can't tear this off, even if Kerstin would have no problem. I know that she would have no problem if I would tear this off, but I can't do that. <laughs> um, junk journaling helped me a lot to... Um, find ways to um, accept myself as a perfectionist and to show me ways um, how life can be without being a perfectionist. But I think if you are a perfectionist, you can't throw that away from you totally. So it will always be a part of myself, I guess. Okay, so next question. Oh my goodness, this is so small. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how do you come up with your page ideas? And how long does it take you to make a journal? <laughs> um, how long is your day? How long do you have time to hear what I have to say to this question? <laughs> um, how do you come up with your page ideas? Um I don't know. I I really, really don't know. I mean, I'm um, following many people on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, I also go to Pinterest to get inspiration and to look what other people are doing. But in the most cases, when I try, um, for example, I I don't have an idea for a page or for a journal, how I can start or something like that. Um, then it can happen that I go to Instagram and look what the others are doing, that I uh, go to Pinterest and search for some um, <clears throat> ideas. But in the most cases, um, it's given me um, an idea what I want to do on my page, but not how. So, for example, I would see this here on Pinterest. And I would see that this here is a little um, fold-out page. This is even a pocket, isn't it? No. Seems to be a pocket, but it is no pocket. But perhaps I see something that you can fold out. Here's a pocket and here's some um, hand uh, writing or something like that. And I see, oh, I can flip this and I can flip this and this and this. And here are some art journaling things. Um, here is some handmade paper, obviously. Here's a bird and here's a flower. Then you will perhaps um, see on my page that I am creating and showing you in my video, for example, you will see a flip out that is similar like this, but you will 
uh, in the most cases, don't see a bird, don't see a flower, um, and don't see some art journaling stuff in this style. Um, that means I sometimes get an idea about what I want to do, but when I start creating my page, I'm using my own materials, of course, I'm using what I have, um, and the page in the end, in the in the most cases, looks totally different than what I have seen on my inspirational post or, or on, on this Pinterest post or Instagram post. Um, it can also happen uh, that I'm outside and that I see a flower, for example. I would like to give you an example um, that was not so long ago. So uh, when I created my fairy paper, this grungy fairy paper that I'm showing you in the end of the video, um, I was outside and there were some dandelions um, that had already those white, you know, uh, the blossoms. I don't know the English word for that. So when a dandelion is dying and giving his seeds then you know it has this white uh, round thingy on top and I have seen that and um, it was such a sunny day that I thought I could make a little video of that and I have taken my phone and I went through those dandelions and I watched how the little seeds were flying away and I've tried to film that and that brought me the idea this is a little sneak peek by the way <laughs> That brought me the idea to include those dandelion thingies into my printable. Um, so this is one of the Grungy Fairies pages. And these dandelions here in the background um, have this background. I mean, that is the story behind why I have put this here. And this can happen not only digitally, of course, that can happen in a physical junk journal as well. It can happen that I see something in my daily life and I include that into my journaling pages. And that's the reason why it is so hard to explain how I come up with my ideas. And that's also the reason why it's very hard to explain how long it takes to make a journal. From the very first idea until I have a finished journal in my hands, it can take months. Sometimes it's only a few days because the ideas are coming very fast um, and I have the time to make the journal and I have this so-called me time for myself to make this journal. But sometimes it can also happen that I'm in the middle of my process and uh, running out of ideas and then I put this stuff from the journal away, put the single pages that I already have into my uh, shelf or into a box um, and work on that a few days or weeks later and uh, that means making a journal can take yeah a few days or even a few months to finish. And I think it's also very important that you don't stress yourself with making a journal. Um, I mean, if you uh, sell your journals and you have perhaps a, a custom order and a customer comes and says, I want a journal in this or that theme or color palette or whatever and has special wishes for the journal and you have a deadline where you have to finish this journal, then of course it's much harder to make a journal than when you don't have that. And um, that's also the reason or one of the reasons why I'm not taking custom orders anymore. Um, in the past, I have done that and I could manage that. But in the meantime, I have realized that I have not enough time um, to make those journals. There are too many people who want a journal from me and um, I can't manage that anymore. So um, perhaps that answers another question. Um some of you have asked me um, if you can buy my journals. Yes, you can buy my journals, but you have to um, follow my Etsy shop. I will put my finished journals into my Etsy shop and there you can buy them. So you have to follow the shop and uh, check the shop um, you know, regularly uh, to see if there's a new journal because I, yeah, uh, I, I am not taking custom orders anymore and uh, I put into the shop what I have when it's finished. The next question is how many journals have you kept for yourself? How many are on your shelves? I'm not sure what to do with the journals I have made. 
I have not so many journals for myself. There are some travel journals. I have three journals uh, about Rome, my, my travels to Rome. I was there three times, so that means... Uh, no, that's not correct. I was there for three times since I'm making junk journals. <laughs> uh, so I have three of those travel journals. I have um, one personal journal where I'm, yeah, that's more like an altered book where I create uh, some pages for myself and trying out some things. I have my 365 days journal that I've shown you in my previous videos uh, that's laying on my desk very often and I'm creating in that journal um, some pages where I'm answering your questions as well and that's also some kind of a personal journal. Um, then I have my blind date journal that you've also seen on my channel. Uh, and yeah, some other journals that I've created within uh, some YouTube series. Um, but the most of the journals that I'm making are going into my Etsy shop. Uh, when one personal journal is finished, I make a new one so that I have one where I can journal in, but the other journals go into my Etsy shop. And that's also a suggestion for you. If you um, don't know what to do with your journals, why not trying to sell them? I think there are many people out there who love handmade journals and who really appreciate the ideas and the work and the effort that is going into such a journal and who like to journal in such a handmade thing. So um, that's my suggestion. If you don't know what to do with your journals, try to open an Etsy shop or you can also um, sell that on other platforms. It doesn't have to be Etsy, of course, but I guess that Etsy is a good um, starting point. Etsy also have some things that I don't like, <laughs> but that's not not the point here. But um, I think it's a good place if you want to sell your journals and um, yeah, to be seen. If you want to sell your journals and you would open um, an own shop on your own website, for example, then of course it's way harder to be seen than if you would try that on Etsy because many people are shopping on Etsy. Then there was another very interesting question, and I'm just taking this journal here. Ooh, that is very big. <laughs> so that's the last one that I want to show you. Um, the question is, I'd like to know more about German crafters. Is junk journaling very popular? <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, in the meantime, oh, look at this. Look at this. <sighs> A reason to 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 get lost of all of the words that are in my head. This is so cool. Uh, I have built a Facebook group for German junk journalists. This Facebook group is called Junk Journal Deutsch. So that means Deutsch means German. Um, in the meantime, we have over two thousand members in this uh, group, but it has also become some kind of an international group in the meantime. There are many of you um, who watch my YouTube videos who are also member of this group. Um, that means we are a mix of, yeah, let's say, mainly German-speaking people, but also um, some English-speaking people. And I really, really appreciate that you um, who are in this group as my viewers um, have done that and that you are joining the German community as well. That's a thing that I always wanted to say and I think this is the right situation where I can do that. Um, that's also something about this community that I just can't believe. I mean, you can't understand the language, but you are a member of this group and that's so wonderful. Um, if you're thinking, oh, that sounds interesting um, and I want to know more about this junk journal German group, then please check out uh, the info box. There's the link to this group. It says Facebook Gruppe Junk Journal Deutsch. So that means Facebook group Junk Journal German. Um, you will find mainly German people there. That can be perhaps interesting if you want to come in contact with people from other countries, I mean Germany, or there are also some people from the Netherlands and from Belgium. Um, we have many German-speaking people there. I mean, <laughs> the people from the Netherlands and from Belgium are able to speak German. <laughs> 
facts. So that's what I want to say. Say, um, and um, Facebook also has this little translation button. That means if you are joining this group, um, you would have no problems to understand what the people are saying or writing there. I mean, if there's a video posted, then it's in German, of course. You can enjoy what you are seeing there, but you can't understand it, probably. But for everything that's written within the posts, you can use this little uh, translation button. And then you can... Um, Yeah, have a translation that's uh, probably made by Google Translator. Uh, it could be a little bit weird, but I guess you can follow what the people are saying there. So if you are interested in this group, check out the link. I would be very, very happy to find some more yeah, English-speaking people uh, who would like to join that group. And yeah, that we can perhaps become a little bit more international. <laughs> And uh, I have made the experience that the German speaking people are looking relatively weird at you when you tell them what you are doing. So uh, um, a few weeks ago, I was at a craft fair that was my craft fair. Uh, that was my first craft fair ever. And there were some people uh, who were selling stamps and, uh, for example, um, distress oxide inks, alcohol inks, all that stuff that we like to use. Um, also some people um, who sold paper and that stuff and stencils, everything that you can imagine that we junk journaler would love. And... Uh, of course, you are coming in contact with some people who are at such a craft fair. And I've tried to find out if anyone knows junk journaling there. <laughs> Guess what happened? <laughs> so there was also... Oh, I can perhaps uh, blend in this uh, video uh, here for you. Um, I have talked with a man who had... Um, a steampunk hat on his head. Uh, he was in in this steampunkish clothing and uh, I had the chance to talk to him and he also allowed me to publish this video material on YouTube, by the way. Um, don't think something <laughs> strange about me, so I have asked him. Uh, and what you can see here now is a little interview that I have had with him in German. So I'm only showing you the video material and not what he said because you can't understand it. But um, he told me that he is on such craft fairs. He had um, his woman, um, or uh, not, that's not the right word. His wife <laughs> is selling some beads and charms and um, even uh, those steampunk clothing and that stuff. And uh, he is very familiar with this steampunk theme. And I guess that steampunk journals are very, very popular, but he has never heard about a steampunk journal, about junk journaling at all. And that was so strange for me. He could tell me everything about steampunk. He has talked about steampunk music and um, everything, but he had no idea uh, how a steampunk journal could look. And that's an example, uh, yeah for the German reaction to uh, junk journaling. I mean, that is not only the German reaction, of course. Other people would react in the same way. But, um, yeah, that is an example of this craft fair. I mean, uh, how can you come in contact with people um, and talk about junk journaling? For me, this uh, event there was very helpful because I could try to find some people who are um, familiar with junk journaling or who have heard about that. But there was no one except one um, woman. Uh, she's also in my Facebook group. That was a very special meeting. I haven't expected that I would uh, see her there. So um, I will show you the video material of that as well. She had a little uh, area there where she sold things for junk journaling. Um, I have known her name from my Facebook group. And then suddenly when I came there to this little area where she was uh, selling her stuff, then I realized that I know her and she realized that she knows me. So I was like, ooh, Lydia, I know you because she had a little sign on her 
uh, belly uh, where her name was written. And I said, Lydia, I know you. Hey, hi, here, I'm Luise. And she was like, Heinze? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and she <laughs> said, oh my goodness, uh, what are you doing here? Because the way from here in Austria to this town in Germany where this craft fair was, was not so... Uh, close we had to drive uh, i guess three hours uh, to get there and she has not expected of course that i uh yeah will be there as well <laughs> and then we talked about junk journaling and that was really cool because she was the only person who had an idea what junk journaling is i mean <laughs> There were so many people on this craft fair and she was the only one um, I could talk to. All the people who came to her little table where she has shown some journals that other people had made for her. The people were like, what is that? What can I do with that? And um, there were also two girls sitting on um, a chair in front of her desk and they were uh, making a little mm, junk journalish notebook, a li really tiny journal with her help and with her instructions and that was so cool to see um, and it was also so cool to see because those girls were so young um, I wish there were more, more younger people who are into junk journaling and yeah perhaps that will, will happen with those people who um, show junk journaling on craft fairs but the German people don't know what that is <laughs> That was an example that is relatively rare, I would say. <laughs> And I guess that I will not find more people in my, my closer area. I mean, we have to search them in the Internet and online on the social media platforms. And I guess then we will find them. And that's good. <laughs> Look at this. This is so cool. This is this is like jumping into this world that Kerstin has created on these pages. This is so gorgeous with these layers around here. This different sizes of the pages. That is so awesome. And this... Ah. When I touch this, while knowing that I'm a perfectionist <laughs> and I like it, <laughs> that's, that's a big thing that Kerstin has reached with her work. Really cool. And there was another question that says, does your family understand your journaling? Mine just doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> so, um, oh my goodness, this is fabric. This, this looks so cool. Ah, Kerstin. <laughs> this is so gorgeous. Um, My father and my brother are living in Germany. I live in Austria. So we are very far away from each other. And we are also um, not talking so much about this theme um, and about junk journaling. My father has collected some things for me, mainly from the stash of my mother and my grandmother. My, they both uh, passed away several years ago. And um, the house of my father was still filled with some fabric and some papers and that stuff, some paint. Um, and he has given that to me um, a while ago, um, many buttons and that stuff, because my mother and my grandma, they, yeah, um, they have uh, made their own clothes. They were sewing very much um, and knitting and that stuff. And my grandma also um, made some paintings and artsy stuff. Um, so I got some of those materials. And um, because of the fact that my father has searched for those materials in the house, He has a little bit more understanding for junk journaling. He watched some of my videos um, and um, yeah, he found out what I can use for junk journaling. And then he tried to find some of the materials in the house and um, gave that to me. This is wire. That is so cool. I mean, I, I think this is 
uh, this uh, rabbit wire. Is that the English word as well? I don't know. We use this to uh, make sure that the rabbits can't run away when we have them as pets. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that, but I think you do you know what I mean. This is so cool. I've never, I have never thought about including such things into my journals. Very great. That gives <clears throat> a really interesting texture here to the page. Yeah, so uh, I can say my, my family uh, doesn't get it. They don't know what junk journaling is and they will never understand that, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Then there was a question um, that says, what is your favorite technique when crafting? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what is my favorite technique? There are so many techniques. I mean, I can tell you what I don't like. I don't like making such things here. <laughs> Everything that has to do with needle and thread is not so my favorite thing. Um, I really enjoy playing around, I would say. I enjoy trying out new techniques. I really like sewing with my sewing machine. I really like stenciling. I love everything that has to do with Distress Oxide inks. I love this effect that this ink can bring to a page. I really like those uncontrollable things. Mm, that's strange because I'm a perfectionist, as we have talked about before. But um, yeah, I like those uncontrollable things. I like to have a rough idea of what I want to do and then jump into the process and see the changes, see this things that are coming to my page, perhaps through Distress Oxide ink or gesso or stenciling or water, spraying water, splattering coffee or whatever. Um, and I like to be one with the medium that I'm using and seeing the changes and realizing what the changes on my page are doing with my brain. If you have a clear picture in front of your inner eye, how your page shall look, and it doesn't look like you thought, I think then you can learn the most Uh, out of your process and that's the most interesting thing for me and that's not bound to a special technique yeah so but to answer that question I really really love distress oxide inks and this reaction with water or coffee or gesso um, I also really like uh, this crackle paste I have this one here by Ranger crackle paste in combination with distress oxide inks that's ooh. Then you've asked um, about my favorite embellishment for junk journals. Uh, that's a question that's, oh my goodness, <laughs> so hard to answer. I think that my absolutely favorite embellishments uh, are tags, uh, even if it's hard for me to say that, because I also like journaling cards. I like uh, little banners. I like hidden paper clips. I like everything. I mean... Ah, these tiny things that we can put into a journal as an embellishment. This, look at this, this is just cool. I mean, these are not my favorite colors, but this is an idea that I have never seen before with this wire, and this can be my favorite embellishment for the next week. But, ah, yeah, <laughs> that's so hard, that's so hard. But if I... um. I have to decide which is my favorite embellishment. Then I would say uh, it's it's a tag because tags are a great, um, they have a great size to work on. Um, even if there's no, you know, there's no rule for the size of a tag. But um, I like this small surface. I like to... Um, bring my view to this small sur surface and create a piece of art on a small surface. That's sometimes also really helpful if you don't know what you want to do in your journal. Then first make the embellishments and uh, make a tag, for example, and concentrate your ideas 
onto this little surface, um, then you perhaps are not so overwhelmed with the whole project. And that may be a reason why I like tags so much. These Tim Holtz paper dolls, I'm so in love with them. These are so, so cool. Take the paper dolls, throw them to a page and your page is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, this page would be awesome without the Tim Holtz paper dolls as well. Sorry, Tim, but <laughs> Kerstin has made this and Kerstin is great. But look at this. You can make a neutral background. I mean, this is very dimensional and very bammy. But put those paper dolls on top and you have the perfect arrangement. <sighs> I love this. I really love this. What do you prefer to use, handmade or existing embellishments? I would say that depends on what I want to do. Um, if I have a page and I've made a really, really um, outstanding background that took me, for example, three hours to make, then perhaps... Uh, I am satisfied with my background and I put an existing embellishment on top. For example, the Tim Holtz paper dolls. Uh, please imagine I would have made this background and I have to um, distress this corrugated cardboard. I have to glue the collage paper on top. I have to splatter. I have to wait until everything is dry. I have to seal the surface. I have to think about where to put my scraps and that stuff. That is a lot of a lot of work for the brain and perhaps um sometimes you can also feel like soaked out. Do you know what I mean? You are satisfied with the background and then then you are like I want to finish that and I want to have that in my hands and say this is what I made today to be proud of yourself as well then it can be very, very helpful to have a pre-made embellishment um, like those paper dolls, put them on, on top and everything is wonderful. Um, but of course, I also like those totally handmade things. This cluster here, for example, um, made out of some paper, some cheesecloth, obviously, this thread here and this button. Um, I, I enjoy those embellishments as well uh, because, yeah, you can see the work behind that. You can, I mean, this is a bought thing. Yeah, this is great, but you have bought that on Amazon or wherever in a scrapbooking shop <clears throat> and then you have taken it out of the package and placed it here. It looks great, but this is handmade. You can see what is behind this uh, in another way than you see what is behind this. Ah, do you know what I mean? I, I can't say um, this is better than that or that is better than this. I can't say that because the eye for the beauty of this thing is here and here but it's it's this mix of using something uh, pre-made and making something by yourself i mean uh, i don't want to decide which uh, embellishments i like better the next question is uh, which journal is your favorite and i would like to combine that with another question that says would you ever travel to other countries to stay with junk journal clubs for teaching multimedia junk journal art? My favorite journal is the journal that I will make when I travel to Rome the next time. <laughs> so my favorite journal is not existing at the moment. I would like to travel to Rome again and make a special journal. And that's the reason why I have combined that with the other question that I've just uh, read to you. Um, I would love to travel to another country, in this case, Italy. Um, and I would love to meet some junk journal friends there. Uh, if I want to teach something there... I don't know, because I think I'm 
more the online teacher, uh, even if I don't like to call myself a teacher. <laughs> you say so often that I'm a good teacher and I, I don't like this word. You know, I was a teacher in my previous life. <laughs> I was a pre preschool teacher and I really don't like... Oh my goodness, have I destroyed this? I really don't like to... Yeah, when someone says I'm a teacher, I, I don't like that. But that has to do with my with my past and with my time in, in school. But what is that? I don't know, my goodness. I will uh, f try to find out where this belongs. I think I have just... But it was loose here. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully I haven't destroyed anything. Um, so I would love to, to travel to Rome and make a special um, journal about that travel. And my dream would be to meet some other junk journal friends in the city walk around, look at the old buildings, get inspired by the city. Um, it's not so much the learning effect about the facts of Rome. I mean, this historical things that you could learn in Rome uh, would be for that travel not so important for me. I would like, like to have an artsy travel to Rome. So everything that we would do there would have to do with art and junk journaling that is a very very big dream and i yeah i don't know if that can come true one day but i'm hoping that very very much <laughs> there was a question from a german viewer that i would like to answer in this video as well because i think it's uh, interesting in english as well um she has asked um, when I take a page out of a book with flowers, for example, and put that into my junk journal, if I have problems to uh, paint or glue something on top so that, um, yeah, the actual page is changed or hidden completely. Um, and... Uh, the second part of the question is, if I take original book pages from a flower book, for example, and put them into my journal and how and I leave them like they are and how I can get a harmony to the other pages then. Um, I guess that is a very, very great question. Uh, I like to work with original book pages as much as with printables. Sometimes, if I want to use a page from a book, especially when it's, for example, a beautiful flower book, then I like to make a copy first, for myself, of course, because of copyright issues. Um, I make a copy for myself, and then I'm trying out different things on the page. And I... Um, react to the page if it would be the original page. If I like what I see there, I take the original page from the book, put that into my journal, and then I try to make a similar page out of that. Uh, yeah, perfectionist, you know. Um, I don't want to destroy my book pages, especially then when they are very rare. I don't have so many... Um, flower books, for example, or even bird books are relatively hard to get here. Or I, I couldn't find uh, so many in the past. Um, and I like to, um, yeah, put original book pages in my journal. It's, and I also like to paint over them. But I also like to try that out first so that I'm sure that I like what I have in my, pa in my book later. And um, if I leave a page as it is, I like to work with color bridges. I don't know if that is an English word, but it's, and I don't know if someone else is using this word, but I like to call that color bridge what I'm doing. Um, I have told you something about that in some other videos, but I would like to try to give you an example here on Kerstin's journal, because I think she has made that as well. 
For example, please imagine that this is the original book page from a book that tells you something about women in the past. You can imagine that. This is from the book where I have, yeah, I have taken it out directly from the book. I put it here behind this belly band. Um, and I have put nothing to this page because I want to leave it as it is. I've only attached, for example, this little uh, thingy here with this little uh, bread. It's a bread, I think, isn't it? Yeah. And that's everything that I have done to this book page. What is a color bridge? How can I get the colors from this book page to the rest of my journal or to the parts that you can see here around the page when you see this page? For example, here there's peeking out some turquoise. Can you see that? Hopefully. This is... Uh, this piece here that comes from this page where we have some turquoise as well. And this thing here, this cheesecloth in the background, is turquoise as well. This cheesecloth is not part of the book page. Of course not. It's glued behind the book page. But the fact that it is here and directly next to the book page... And the other turquoise thingy is here. <laughs> it makes your brain think that this area is one. If this would be my journal, I would probably... Let me take some peacock feathers and just put... Let me, let me just put it like this. Look at this. Now... Please imagine, I mean, I can't glue the ink pad here. Do you know what I mean? I have a strip of peacock feathers uh, paper, yeah? <laughs> and this would be here on the next page. First turquoise thingy, second turquoise thingy, and the third turquoise thingy would make this color bridge perfect for me. One thing that is coming before this book page, one thing that is coming after this book page, and the thing directly next to the book page is this here. Oh my goodness. I hope that that made sense. Oh, <laughs> that was hard to explain. Okay, so that were Kerstin's journals. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And perhaps when I now show you my Grungy Fairies digital printable paper, you will realize that I've used many of Kerstin's uh, things from the journals. So let me place that here too, to bring that together <laughs> for the video as well. Okay, so this is the first page. This set of Grungy Fairies junk journal pages you will find in my Etsy shop. The link is down below in the description box as well. Um, and you can use that to make your own fairy journals, of course. You can um, also combine that with the grungy backgrounds that we've made in one of the other videos. You can combine that with those um, oxide jelly prints that I have made for you for the shop as well. And you can also combine that with the grungy flowers mix and match. And I'm sure there will be some more uh, pages, some more elements. And of course, there will be an ephemera pack that goes with these designs here as well. But the ephemera pack is not finished yet. So uh, don't be disappointed when you go to the shop. You will not find it now there. It is not finished, but I will finish that up in the next days. And then you can find that uh, in the shop as well. I have painted all of these fairies here by myself in Procreate. Uh, that's also the reason why this took me so long. Uh, I have uh, yeah, hand-drawn these on my iPad, but with my hands. And I'm so proud of these little fairies here. I have made them, I have put some water wings to them. So perhaps you can see that here. It's not so 
obvious, but <laughs> they have wings that are made out of water. And I really like that. Um, and can you see this here? Um, this little botanical thingy here, and here as well, here you can see it a little bit better. It has some lace on top. Can you see that? And this lace comes from Kerstin's journals. That is only one example how I used her journals. So I will quickly search for the page and show you what I'm meaning. It's this page here. So this is the lace. I have uh, taken a photo of this page and then I have made yeah, some kind of a digital die cut out of the lace. I have changed the colors a little bit and now um, you can see that the pattern of the lace is in the flower now. And there are some of those details that you will find within uh, these junk journal pages. For example, this here on the bottom of this page is part of Kerstin's design as well. The flower and what you can see here in the background, this flower as well. And what I also want to say, this owl here comes from uh, my friend Manuela Keller. She also has a YouTube channel and she's drawing very, very awesome things on her iPad. She also has an Etsy shop and she uh, makes digital paper as well. And she gave me her owl. Isn't that just cute? She is so perfect. First, I thought um, she would not fit so well into the rest of the style. And then I have put her here and now she's perfect here. And by the way, this is a dandelion in the background as well. But I think in this case it looks more like a sun or a moon or something like that and this owl is sitting in front of that and it's it's some kind of a really light evening ah but perhaps you see something totally different here <laughs> and that would be very fine um yeah then we have this page here uh this fairy here and i've tried to include also some unusual fairies. Uh, I think it's the time for bringing some characters into our printables that we have in our daily life as well. And he is one of those. Please excuse those splatters here. If you perhaps think, what is that? You are totally right. That doesn't fit here. I have tried out something with those pages yesterday evening. And then I've splattered some vintage photo distress oxide ink here to the page. So this is not part of the design. Sorry. Uh, you will see that uh, in the preview of the, of the item in my Etsy shop that this is not part of the design. It looks very, very strange here. <laughs> the same here. I have splattered some weird things to the through the page this is not part of the design and also these red splatters come from some brushos i don't know if you can see that in the camera but uh i haven't realized that uh, when i started recording and now i'm seeing this here sorry um that is not part of the design but of course you can splatter what you want to these pages um yeah so she is watching over him and over him <laughs> So I've tried to include some characters that are not so typical for a fairy printable. I wanted to make something that is grungy and unusual and not so typical fairy-like. And that was also Kerstin's wish when she contacted me in the beginning of this year. She asked me for a grungy fairy kit. And she asked me for an unusual kit. And that's what I've tried to bring into the reality here. And here on this last page, we have this little giraffe animal. You can see she is uh, wrapped around this piece of paper. Um, and this is... I would say a declaration of love to my admin team of my Facebook group. So they will under understand that when they see this um, and they will understand this joke. She has her arm here. She is a little bit like, I'm here. I'm the boss. I'm uh, watching over you. I have to say um, 
what the other people have to do or what the other fairies have to do. She's something like the boss here in this whole printable. And this is a joke about my admin team. They will realize what's going on here because of our private conversations. Um, and I got a very, very cute present from one of my admins. I will show you that. It's this little giraffe here. <laughs> and this was gifted to me in a very hard time that I had. Perhaps you can imagine if you have a YouTube channel and an Etsy shop and all that stuff around, then sometimes it's very hard and it's not always so easy peasy. What you see on YouTube is always like, oh, we are all happy. We create something beautiful. But the things that are behind a digital paper, you can't really see, even if I'm sharing some details with you. But do you know with, uh, what I mean? This real life uh, you normally can't see and it's good that you don't see it. YouTube shall be a nice or uh, nice or a nice place. Sorry, I'm mixing German and English. Um, it shall be a nice place where we share the positive things. And um, this was gifted to me in a very, very special time, a very, what is that? A very hard time. And um, yeah, my friend said to me when she gave this to me, the giraffe has a very, very long neck and she can touch the clouds in the sky. She can reach the cloud, clouds in the sky with her head, but her feet are on the ground. And that's what this giraffe represents for me. And that is a very, very big thing for me. It's not only a stuffed pet for me um, and the reason why she is wrapped around here is that um, <laughs> one of the other admins has bought a snake as a pet and she has so shown um, that snake to us um, in a group chat and then the person who has gifted this to me said "Ooh, a spaghetti so, so um, this snake of the other admin now has the name Spaghetti. So her snake is called Spaghetti now. And when I created this, I thought about this combination of the giraffe and the snake. And now we have this Spaghetti giraffe here. <laughs> so that's the reason behind this. And they sometimes are joking with me. They are saying, Luisa, you are the boss of the group. And because of that... This fairy looks a little bit like me. I mean, she's a little bit more slim like me. I'm a little bit fat, but I didn't want to make her as fat as I am. So she's like she is now. And she's a little bit the boss of this printable. Okay, so I will tell you some more things about these pages in my one of my next videos. Uh, I will start making a grungy fairy journal out of these pages and the others that we've made within this series. Uh, I will take every digital item that I have made and that I will make. The ephemera pack will come for this and then I am going to make a, a grungy fairy junk journal out of these pages and I will also show you um, some yeah tips and tricks how to start with a junk journal because there were so many questions how can I start making a junk journal I'm struggling I don't know where to start I don't know how to start I don't know what to do and I would like to give you some of my favorite tips and techniques and things to do if you're struggling with starting to make a junk journal so I'm hoping very much that this is helpful for you so you will um, yeah, find some more videos with these papers and the others in the future. I hope you like this. Stay healthy, stay creative and see you the next time. Bye bye.